Hey everyone, again, it's Ashley Jones from Designs and Machine Embroidery. I am filling in for Eileen again. I apologize last week. I told you she would be back this week. I was mistaken. I'd forgotten I was planned to be here, um, but she will be back next week and I'll share with you at the end what she's uh, a little uh, sneak peek of what she's going to be doing. Um, and so today we have um, a special presentation for you, but I first wanted to say, make sure you're telling us over in the chat where you're watching from. Um, Tell us what you think about what you saw in the ad. I actually just saw that Dawn said that we've piqued her interest, and that's exactly what I wanted to do, Dawn. I wanted to give you something to think about with some of those household items, um, but we've got some fun information planned for you today. So I am being joined by a friend of mine from uh, Caesar North America, and I'll introduce you uh, to her in a bit. Um, but tell me where you're watching from and tell me um, what you thought about um, using some household items with your embroidery. So I love to make do sometimes um, instead of going out and buying something new. Um, we've lived all over the, the country uh, for years, moved around. And some places that we've lived and even here where we are in Florida, I don't have a lot of shopping options. So I have to sometimes make do with what I've got uh, to make a new project. And I actually find it fun. I think that it's really um, kind of a, a nice way to use uh, the things that you've got and kind of make room and clear out. Um, it just really, um, it really uh, makes my heart smile, I think. So, um, okay, we got people from all over. I see Georgia. I see uh, Laurie Albrecht. Thanks for joining, Laurie. She's part of our education team here, too. Um, I see Arizona and um, what else? Oh, my gosh, they're moving so fast. Ohio, uh, the North Dakota, West Virginia. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Maine, Indiana. Um, I think we've got everybody represented. Wisconsin, North Carolina, Illinois, uh, Judy Warren from um, Hawaii. Aloha, Judy Warren. Thanks for joining. And so I, um, Homestead, Florida. Hey, can I just give a shout out um, to Harriet Ann Palmer in Homestead? Harriet Ann, I am in Key Largo right under you. So, so glad, glad to have you here. Uh, Dawn from Creative Applique. Thank you for joining, Dawn. Okay, so today we are going to be using some household items plus embroidery um, to make something gorgeous. That's what we talked about um, in our um, our promo that you guys saw. And so um, you guys, I think, are going to be really excited. So um, we are doing embroidery, but we really are incorporating some unique uh, ideas here. Um, and I also want to hear from you guys. Have you guys used um, Caesar HTV in your embroidery? embroidery yet. Um, we're going to be talking about that as well today. Um, and I am loving it. It's so much fun. Okay. So before we go on, let me go ahead and introduce you to my friend, Stephanie Young from Caesar and have her join me on the screen. Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, so guess what? I'm here in Tennessee. So <laughs> I have seen all kinds of names that I recognize popping up. So I want to say hey to everybody. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. I saw Louisiana and I saw Wisconsin. I'm going to be somewhere that I've not been next week. I'm going to be in Minnesota. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Might be a little cooler than Tennessee, I think. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. Uh, yeah. And so I see still more popping up. My friend Roz Norman, she's coming to Florida. She's actually a, a Washingtonian. Um, and Jill, thank you for joining Jill. I think Stephanie knows Jill too. She's a friend of ours. So I saw Joanne with Let's Go So. So did hello, you, Joanne, Joanne Banco? Yes. Hello I missed that Laser one. B. Yep. I see. Who do you, who from Laser B? Kelly from Laser Bee. Oh, I missed Kelly uh, flying up there too. There's Reen as well. Thanks, <laughs> Reen, for joining. I'm so glad for, for you to be here as well. But people are saying that they love using the, the Caesar. And so Dorothy says, I have some HTB, but I've not yet used it. So we're going to give... Welcome. Dorothy, some ideas today, right? And so, um, and then Donna says the same thing. She said she bought some uh, Caesar HTB, but she hasn't used it yet. Um, you guys, we have something uh, um, a little bit different. Rather than just putting it in your embroidery, we've got something a little bit different too. So, oh, and look, uh, Mary S. Lawson says, come to Santa Fe. So <laughs> thanks for joining, Mary. Mary's a frequent flyer. She is also over on our, um, our group for our 
software and she's always like very helpful answering questions. So thank you so much, Mary. Um, and so we've got Robin from uh, Houston, Texas. So thanks for joining Robin. Um, and, uh, I see Kelly there. Hey, Kelly, thanks for joining now. And then there's Joanne. So the, the, the comments were flying. So by your eyes are quicker than mine, Stephanie. So, okay. And so, and of course we'll come back and answer some questions, um, as well. But, um, so what we're talking about today, so Stephanie and I were chatting and, um, I love using things around the house. We've lived in several different places throughout the country. And sometimes it's not easy to get, the exact supplies. Now, of course, we can always order, right? But we don't always have that time, right? I'm making something at, you know, late at night, and I need to, you know, make do with what I've got. Um, but I really love that feeling. I think, you know, for me, Stephanie, it almost reminds me of, um, uh, I don't know, maybe when I was younger, when we didn't mail order everything and you didn't always have something. And so you, you know, a lot of times my mom would make do with, with what she had. So I just love the feeling. So what about you? Well, for me, I kind of call it like the MacGyver of crafting <laughs> because, you know, I live in a small town and right. so we don't have a lot of, you know, big stores here. We don't have any big stores here. And so I, you know, either have to think ahead, which, you know, yep. I'm a crafter. I don't. So, and a lot of times I'm crafting late at night. So I start rummaging through, you know, I love Goodwill and I love thrift stores. Yes. Yep. And so I buy things just to craft with them because sometimes have you ever walked through and you just see like that lace shirt, the shirt's ugly. It's not made well, whatever, but you like the lace. Yeah. So I will buy it and then cut it up to use. So that's kind of what inspired part of my project was, was because I like going thrifting. I love that. And I actually, I don't even have a really good thrift store down here where we live is, is more tourist. And so um, even our thrift store, is not as great as other places that we've lived. So, um, which makes it a challenge uh, for sure. But so many people are still saying Caesar HTV is the best. So it I know is. that you'll love that. <laughs> It is. I definitely agree. And we also have Barbara Bell Stringer also yeah, from Tennessee. She's she might be your neighbor. She's a friend of mine, so even better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm glad everybody joined. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start, Stephanie, by showing what uh, you and I were working with. And okay. so I'm going to share my screen again and talk about the design that we used. So this is a design that we have here at Dime. It's called our Stitch Swag. So it's a, um, a semi in the hoop project where the design uh, pattern is stitched by your embroidery machine. And plus, of course, your embroidery machine does all that beautiful embroidery. So um, I needed a bag that matched a dress that had a unique color combination in it. And so I wanted to do something with this set. So I, I told Stephanie, this is this is what I think I want to do. And of course, she took it and did <laughs> some very creative things. Um, but I just needed a bag that matched um, a dress and I needed a, a specific color. So let me show you what um, I started with. And then I'll show you some examples of some things that I've done. And then uh, we'll talk about how, and I know Stephanie um, has some even uh, more unique things that she did. So we just took this and went all kinds of crazy. So this design, of course, she and I had. Um, I had the clutch frame, but it did not match my uh, uh, fabric color that I needed. Um, and uh, also, I know that uh, Stephanie was working with it in a in her flower, and she didn't have something that was the right color. So we we used some household items to make do. So I'll start start Stephanie over um, at my camera. And this is my bag. Let me move this out of the way because that color is really distracting. But take a look at this. So what I did here was that Caesar HTV, instead of putting it in my design stuff, I actually fused it onto a piece of quilting cotton. And then I was able to let the fabric act like the uh, base fabric for my design. Now, I know that you have told me before that I could do that. So I thought I would try it. Mm -hmm. And I think it turned out gorgeous. Now, the frame uh, that I had was silver. And so I didn't want the silver right next to this is kind of a um, what would you call it? It's kind of like a um, 
it's not really rose gold. It has more brown to it. Wouldn't you say this is the tawny? It's a tawny. Uh, yeah. So to me, it's like a light coppery thick color. Okay, perfect. And so in this nail polish color here is like a bronze color. So I didn't have a, a color frame that would match. So <laughs> originally I was thinking I would spray paint, but we don't really have a spray paint around our house except for other than black my husband uses <laughs> and so but I thought I could probably paint that with this bronze nail polish and so I did um, a coat of uh, a base coat just like I would do on my nails uh, Stephanie and then well I never do my nails, so I shouldn't say when I do my <laughs> nails. But uh, and so, but sometimes when I dress up, I will do my nails. But I did a base coat just because I was worried about it scratching off. I painted it and then I did uh, the top coat as well to protect it. And you can see as the light hits it, how shiny it is. <laughs> and the nail polish that I put on there, it kind of had a pearlescent like effect to it. And so it like, I have to say, sometimes, you know, you've got these ideas, Stephanie, and you're thinking that's going to be great. And then you do it and it's not so great, <laughs> but I love it. I think it turned out fantastic. Wow. So I fused that on, um, you know, the entire piece of fabric um, and then painted that with nail polish. And this is lined and I did paint the inside as well. Um, and I just did a, a light color for the lining there. But what I did, and this is something that Stephanie taught me a while ago. So the heat transfer vial from uh, Caesar has that carrier sheet on top. And then we use it in embroidery by separating the carrier sheet. And then the fabric underneath just acts like a glittery fabric. So we've been putting it into applique and it rips away. It's so fun and easy. But this time I fused it onto a piece of quilting cotton and I wanted to show you if I put my hand underneath, I mean, it still has that drape to it and look at that. That's just a beautiful gold piece of fabric. Isn't that, it looks like a pot of gold, right? Um, and so, so that's what I did. And then I used this piece of fabric to actually stitch uh, the shape from the design collection. Um, and then I have a couple of other two that I'll share uh, that I did the same thing uh, where I fused the fabric. What do you guys think about this one? So this one is uh, the jade, I think. Stephanie, correct me if I'm yes. wrong. Jade, yes. a color. I'm still learning all the colors, um, but this is a jade and look at that. And this is the peacock design from that same collection. And I did, I fused that onto a piece of fabric and then hooped it with my stabilizer. You can see I left it unfinished so you could see and then stitched through all the layers. Um, and then the black, the back, I just left plain. I thought if I wanted to turn it around without the peacock on there, I could. But look at this. Talk about making do with what you've got. I had this peacock fabric, so that's going to be my lining when I get to that point. So how cool is that, right? So I am really, uh, I really love this. But yeah, that the the nail polish worked out great for me. And it actually feels nice. It's not rubbing off or anything. So I was really pleased. That was something that I was a little unsure of. But hey, it worked out for the best, right? How cool. So <laughs> Stephanie. I know that you did some <laughs> completely different things. And I've got one more example I'm going to show them where the vinyl is ripping away. Um, that was kind of a layered effect, but I will save that uh, till after you show some of the things that you did. So, um, so show us, Stephanie, what you have. Well, you know, that is such a hard act to follow, Ashley. Oh, I, I think you kind of threw me under the bus on that one because that was what? phenomenal and gorgeous. And I, you know, you know, I love that idea when we were talking about the lace, but that was so, so gorgeous. One of the comments that was asked was, how did you fuse that? And so, I, I definitely figured that would come up. So, so yes, talk to us about that. So I know you had shown it fused. I'm going to step up to my heat press. Yes, you could use an iron. Of course you can. For me, it's just easier. I have a heat press. So I'm going to use that. So you can see I have a piece of glitter. It has the carrier sheet still on it. And I have a piece of quilter's cotton. So I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to lay down, lay down and press. I'm pressing for 10 seconds. If you're using a home iron, just really press. Don't iron. 
but press, pick up your iron and move to get it to fuse. So that was all I really had to do. And now I'm going to take off that carrier sheet. So you can see that I'm removing that carrier sheet. And now I have some blue, gorgeous, shimmery fabric to use. So one of the questions that's asked a lot of times, does it have to be glitter? It does not. So I'm going to show you another piece. Again, I've got a piece of quilter's cotton. And this is called Copper Electric. So electric is one of our lines of vinyl. It has more of a shimmer to it. I pulled it since you had that piece earlier that I said kind of had that bronzy feel to it. So now you can see I have pressed it. And I'm going to come over and take that carrier sheet oh. right off. Oh, I need that in my life. So <gasps> is that not, and look, I mean, what a light hand it has. Of course, it's a little warm right this moment. But that way, I now, I'm ready to sew with it, embroider with it, use it in the hoop. Am I ever going to find this color fabric? No, you know, I can't I, think and, of it. And if I did, it's going to be expensive, and I'm going to have to buy at least a half a yard of it. Yes. I don't want a half a yard of it. I want, you know, enough for that project. Right. And it and it literally took like, a, I mean, this is only about, you know, probably like seven inches or so right. for the height. And um, I mean, it's not even 10 full inches for the width. So you're right, Steph, the you know, a, a six by 10 piece to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I love that. And you can do like little small things, like you said, and not have to buy a whole sheet of fabric. So that is like a very cool idea. Somebody, the comment <laughs> came up earlier about the difference in what we're doing and what Kimberbell has. Um, I don't, Obviously, I don't use Kimberbell's product, so I can't speak to that, but we can speak to to this product. So um, that's what uh, we used in these processes. So it may be the same. It may be, you know, there may be some differences, not 100% uh, familiar with what their yeah. uh, product has to offer. This one, the reason that we um, teamed with Caesar to bring this in was because we like the fact that this is um, great for our applique projects, but it also um is great for other things too so mm -hmm. like you you saw here we just made this beautiful glittery fabric um stephanie's also going to show you too on her uh design that she did she actually just cut out her letters and fused them on so it doesn't have to be used with embroidery it could be just simply cut out um and fused on you can sew it with their sewing machine which is actually what i did here so when i put my right sides together you use your sewing machine to uh, stitch the two layers and to box the corners and so i sew through that with my sewing machine so um it's you know an all-around useful item so what mm -hmm. other things uh steph am i missing something let me there was a couple questions that's the one that i was just going to answer so brenda was asking will the vinyl get weak with a lot of holes of it so ashley's going to demonstrate what's going to happen and so don't think that we didn't see that comment brenda we'll be right back and give you a hands-on on that, that. <laughs> and when you use it in applique do you fuse it to the fabric no you don't have to for applique this yep. is if we're going to use it for, you know, an in the hoop kind of sewing that type. And again, Ashley, I'll show you what it's going to look like. I will give a kind of, I'm going to change my view real quick. And, and while, you're changing, camera. while you're changing your view, Mary S. Larson says that is so gorgeous. She would want a yard. So I think she was talking about your last <laughs> <That> fabric. <is>. <laughs> So look at that gorgeous sample. Oh my gosh. Tell them what you did there, Steph. So that's the flower from that same design collection. Uh, Stephanie went rogue and she didn't make a bag. <laughs> well, one of the things I actually had someone ask me that they, their daughter loved orange and they could never find an orange flower. Of oh. course, here in Tennessee, you know, we're go orange. We are, you know, balls all the way. And so this was a perfect bag to make that on so i knocked out a gift while i was doing this so you know it's it's all good and you're gonna see here that i used lace so i did not have any orange lace go figure 
but I had a couple of things. So you're going to see, you know, the solo cup. <laughs> we and, don't sell those. You know, and if you're not, if you, you know, not sure, you can Google what colors make what to get your color wheel. But mm -hmm. from primary school, I did remember that red and orange, red and yellow mm -hmm. make orange. So this is where I just kind of did it. I kept a cloth and then I just kind of dropped it down to see was that the color that I wanted it to be. And then I added, mixed it a little bit more. This is not diluted much at all. I just added just a smidge of water in there to the lace. And then I used my paintbrush to kind of stir it around a little bit. And the next question always is, you know, is it going to fade or wash away? Well, make it a lot darker in here because that lace, since it's so airy, it's going to look a little bit lighter. So I went kind of dark and I'm going to show you exactly. So I have, you know, this will probably be one of those times that I knock this over, spill it, <laughs> do all kinds of stuff. We'll capture it and keep it forever in, in right. cyberspace. <laughs> there we go. So you can see how orange that is. And that one's been soaking for a little bit this morning. And so how many times have you got food coloring on you? It doesn't, doesn't come off easily. It so does I'll be not. Honest, this does not come off very easily. Of course, this project that I'm using it on, that backpack is not really going to get washed. Right. But I have used it and washed it and it's held up. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I agree with you. It doesn't always come off of your finger. So, but that's kind of what I was thinking in my bag too. That would really be a good one in the clutch if you dyed that lace because the clutch is not going to get laundered either. So that is gorgeous. I would have never used food coloring to dye my fabric. So I've done the tea stain before. Um, you and I talked about that where we dyed with tea, but Look at that. That is gorgeous. Is that two different colors? It is. So what I was trying to do was I didn't want a tie dye look. I wanted it kind of an ombre. Yeah. So I have a darker purple go into a little bit of a lighter purple in there. And so that was just me squirting a little bit and scrunching it and then letting it go. Oh, gotcha. So that was that color. And here was a peach that I did because I wasn't Ooh. sure what I wanted to do with it. If I wanted a true orange or if I was going to go yeah. a little peach here. So all of those just with, you know, food coloring. Yeah, I love that. And love somebody that. earlier, I think Joanne had said that lace is making a comeback. Well, one of the pieces of lace that I'm using actually came from a blouse that I didn't really like. And what I did with it is I put it on my pair of jeans and I used a spray bottle of bleach to get that lace pattern onto my jeans. Oh so my we God. will talk about that at another time. And so there's lives. another, that's another household product, <laughs> right? Steph, bleach. So, so, so bleach that's pretty cool. Used with lace. So, you know, to me, there's so many ways that we can take that same design. So I'm again, let me go back over to my camera and show. So this way, that design looks a lot more younger, a lot more, you know, with the colors that I chose, having backgrounds. So it, it to me, it kind of looks youthful. Love it. You'll notice maybe that I did not stitch all of the design. Yeah, I see that. So the leaves, they have some, uh, there's more satin stitch around the leaves. And I think there's like maybe a, a satin stitch um, in the center of the leaves. That looks great. Well, to, I didn't want it to look too heavy for her. Yeah. She's a young girl. So I didn't want it to be too heavy, but I still wanted the illusion of some leaves. These leaves could have been appliqued. I could have put some green vinyl down, some green fabric, but I just, it made it heavy to me. So this is kind of my version of a youthful way to do that. And people sometimes give vinyl, you know, that they don't think that it can be kind of glamorous. So let me show you my version of a glamorous. Oh, so I this, just, is this is a black bag. That is with, beautiful. And so I did tone on tone 
except for just a few little pieces to bring some color in. So this is so black bag with black glitter with velvet. Oh, I love that. That is that turned out gorgeous. It's very nice. So just some other questions are popping up, Steph. So what do you use to fuse the material to the vinyl? And so I'm assuming she means like whenever we added the material to the back, um, she just used her heat press. I don't have a heat press. I used my home iron. <laughs> and to know the settings, uh, if you're using Caesar HTV, they have an app that I refer to all the time because I can't remember all of the heat settings. So I definitely would recommend <laughs> downloading that app if you're using Caesar's HTV. But here's another comment that I absolutely love and I think is uh, perfect. So Dawn uh, Tennyson <laughs> says that I have to haven't used food culture in years she's going to put it on the grocery list that is awesome so i'm glad that we could help <laughs> and so the food coloring it definitely is useful and then laurie albrecht says she uses vinegar to help set the food coloring which is uh, yes. another very good idea uh too um to add that to set and jennifer alexander says um i think she was referring to the getting it on your fingers and she said lots while she was making sugar cookies <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I definitely agree with that for sure. And so a few other things too. So Retha Ranke wanted to know, um, is it okay to do free motion quilting over the vinyl after it's pressed to the quilting cotton? And I would say yes, because um, the these stitches here that are making up the... Um, the peacock feather here those are just run stitches they are triple runs um to make them a little more bold and so um i that did great and so no issues with with quilting stitches either that's a great question um too but i will say if you don't fuse the fabric it does um it'll rip away from those run stitches the same way and i'll show under my camera what i mean by the the rip away and then rain says stephanie always goes rogue and everything turns <laughs> out great i agree with rain i think i saw kelly said haha he agrees with rain well wow. um, so for sure and then this right here one more because K carrie cunningham i think she is your soulmate because she yeah. said she needs to use it on a denim jacket. Now, Carrie, I have seen more denim jackets come from Stephanie Young than anybody in my life. So you guys may be um, <laughs> baby soulmates there. <laughs> so go well, ahead. Carrie Stephanie. and I are actually friends. And so, yes. And so someone else said earlier in the comments that they had 33 denim jackets. And I was like, I'm with you, sister. I am so with you. So I miss that, that definitely was my soul sister of knowing you know you never know yeah. i love a denim jacket but so between you and i we know that sometimes projects go rogue and go bad they do go rogue so, and go bad. We've got photographs that we share amongst each other about yeah. some of those. We should have a, a Facebook Live that's nothing but bloopers sometimes, Stephanie. I love that too. idea. We need and to do that. Because I want my blooper to go before yours so that yours looks worse <laughs> since your projects always look so phenomenal and then I, I go. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, the, um, but here, this is a good question from C. Lombard that says, an ordinary iron can be used to fuse the H TV and yes. yes it can tell them a little bit more stuff so you'll see me making this motion whenever i talk about an iron and when i'm going to go backwards one second if you don't download the caesar app you can also go to caesar in a and it will have htv instructions and you can look at each category and it'll give you a recommendation for time temp and how to use it with a home iron so with a home iron you want to be almost white knuckled. I don't recommend doing it on your ironing board because of that sponge underneath mm -hmm. when you're doing it. So it, do it on something firm, either, you know, use a cutting board, something, a tile, just so you have something firm behind it. Oh, good and then you're going to press and lift up and move and press 10 seconds. And that way you're getting it all the way across. What it takes for fusion, it's not just heat, it's heat and pressure. So that's why I love using a, you know. Love that. Because then I can just do one big square because our irons are, you know, triangle. Yeah. And then there's those little holes in it. 
So where those holes are, you're not going to get that same pressure. So that's gotcha. why you keep picking it up, moving it, picking it up, moving it, picking it up and moving it. Oh, good point. Good point. But Lots you can, of more you definitely can do it. Lots of more questions. About. So we'll answer a few more and then I'm going to show them uh, um, <laughs> one more under here that we're going to rip away. And then I know you have some other things, too. So um, uh, Lorraine says, how does the food coloring hold up in the laundry? I think you did mention that. But do you want to say again, Steph, what you said a few minutes ago? Well, first, it's going to matter how much you dilute that original. So if I made mine very strong with just food coloring and just a little bit of water, so that way that's really a strong hold mm -hmm. and it held up. I've watched that little scrap two or three times last night and this morning. And as someone said, if you can set it in vinegar, that will kind of yeah. help set the color. I'm not going to say that it's going to last forever. It's food coloring. But like I said, you know how well it sticks to our fingers. So yeah, for sure. And I think we answered this one earlier about fusing. So we we fused the Caesar HTV to a piece of I did quilting cotton. Um, actually, one of my bags was a muslin, you know, like you're not going to see that fabric in the background. But then if you're putting it in applique, um, you also want to fuse it down so it doesn't rip away and home iron. Um, if you have a heat press, if you have an easy press from Cricut, all of those uh, work great. Now, this is a good comment from Ann. Thanks for joining Ann. She's a frequent flyer, uh, Steph. And so she <laughs> says her scan and cut has so many flowers that her mind is blowing up. So <laughs> I love it. And share that on our, our, our Facebook group. We would love to see what all of you guys make. So, um, you know, if you come up with some ideas from, you know, what we've done or what you see Eileen do, um, definitely share. We always love to see what you guys are doing. And then Michelle M says, did you use a multi-needle machine for the backpack and the purse? So, I did. I did. Yeah. And typically I have craft room up here that, and I have a persona in this room and then downstairs i have a multi-needle so i typically i have a flat bed i use it for a lot of projects but of course for this purse so you know i love a deal right yeah. so this right. purse i bought 12 of them because you know i'm stephanie and they were <laughs> 2.99 a piece well i'm not gonna un you know take something apart to sew it back together i no way i'm either gonna put it a vinyl on it yeah. Or I'm going to put it on a multi-needle. I'm not going to take it apart for $2.99. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you there. So Donna Harwick says, um, so how did you get the lace to the vinyl? So I don't know if she's talking about yours or mine, but now mine, I left my lace uh, separate than the um, vinyl because I wanted it to kind of have that dimension. So in my bag, I didn't adhere the lace to the vinyl. Um, and if you wanted to, um, what would you say Stephanie I mean like you could quilt but you would see those quilting stitches right um you could maybe use some sort of uh fusible that would bond the two um and then uh um do you have any other recommendations for if you want to make sure that your lace stays connected to the uh glitter htv you could use like you say a fusible but then you know so caesar has one that's called caesar adhesive and it's double-sided so one side would go to the lace and the other side could go to the your glitter. fabric i'm like so awesome. for mine mine is just applique down so it's still loose i wouldn't want it to get too tight especially for your bag because then as it's opening and closing you could have that kind of it gives it a wear point i would think yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I wanted mine to be separate because I wanted it to kind of have that dimension of that yeah. overlay. So um, we've got some few more questions. But before we answer uh, those, um, <laughs> let me um, head over and show um, my other example that's actually still in the hoop because I wanted to show that it literally is I stitch it all at one time and then uh, rip this away. And so I used um, this design here, the one that is the um, uh, well, I don't, here we go. This flower, it actually doesn't show up as well. And I was like, where did it go? But this one with the pink, um, frame, uh, that actually, believe it or not, Stephanie, to make that pink frame, it's washi tape. I know that you love that washi or washi tape. <laughs> That's and it. so that frame there was wrapped with that tape. 
um, to make it a different color. But that flower is kind of hard to see on that because it's it's not an applique flower. It is just satin stitches. And so it makes a really good point that with the HTV, because it rips away, you don't have to have an applique. So let me show you what I did here. Um, so this was actually a recommendation or, or an idea from uh, Gloria. She's part of our education team here at Dime and does a ton of other stuff for us. But she was like, when she saw that, she was like, I see all ombre. I was like, ooh, ombre it is. So I've got uh, three different colors of the HTV and these are just satin stitches, very narrow satin stitches. But look at how nice it rips away. You don't have to do any trimming. How cool is that, right? Now I left a, oh, and I just saw some this where I messed up there. So I'm going to leave a big piece so I can fix it. Um, and so the I layered this because I didn't know where one flower was going to end and the other begin. Um, and so I needed to make sure I had good coverage. Now, this design is I'm leaving this big piece here and you guys will see why in just a second. Um, th this design is not an applique. It is just a um, satin stitch. And you can see that it like looks gorgeous. So I'm going to rip this away big and then come down so that I make sure I've got enough of this covered. So this design, actually, it goes up into the top of the bag. And I don't have a satin stitch that ends there. So what I'm going to do, Steph, is I'm just going to fuse that down. And so then whenever I actually stitch my bag together, it's going to make sure that it's got, you know, plenty of that HTV. But did that turn out gorgeous or what? <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> Gloria, I, that was a beautiful idea. Beautiful, beautiful idea. I yeah. now want to hide mine because I've seen <laughs> yours. I thought that turned out like so cute, but I literally, guys, I stitched this. Now I did have to use my software because this design and Stephanie, I know you stitched this design. So all of the petals are all one color and I had to use my embroidery software to actually isolate what I considered to be these layers. Um, and uh, that took a little bit of work. But if you have embroidery software, you could do that. I just selected, you know, these petals and changed the color. Um, and then I made sure that they stitched in that order. So I placed down a large piece of this purple first. And I did leave it when my pink stitched. I actually ripped the purple from underneath from behind because I didn't right. want to rip too much like this right here. So what I plan to do with this because it's heat transfer, you know, and I can iron it down. I want to make sure that I still have enough so that it goes right to the top edge of my frame which this is design is meant to do. And since my design didn't have a satin stitch, I'm just going to make that happen. Um, and then of course it'll all be hidden under the edge of the frame. So isn't that super cool, but that's the reason that I'm loving using uh, the HTV because it rips away so easy. And, but you know, this isn't the only thing you can do. We just, you know, wanted to give you some, some options, but this is how this design stitches. So um, the purse, the, the clutch frame, it actually stitches the pattern and the design design on your fabric in the hoop and then you take it out and then you cut out the excess so like here's another um this is the first uh peacock feather that i did this is just regular quilting cotton and then the the heat transfer vinyl i did use all uh king star metallic in this one though so that's nice right Steph? you know you you love that thread too um but you can see the shape of it and then you actually use these stitch lines to assemble it so you stitch the front and the back together and you'll do the same with the lining um and then you'll stitch here the opening and, and do the turning inside out so but how cool is that what do you think i think that that was like that was, I think it turned out to be my favorite one. <laughs> yep. I love well, it. I don't know if it's my favorite because they're all my favorite. <laughs> they're they're yeah. kind of like kids. They're all my favorite. Right, but right. I really, uh, I like yours better than mine now. So oh. I'm going to try to see. I just, I moved my other little camera to see if I can uh, zoom in just a smidge over here so that you can see my version. So let's see here. So I thought when I saw that design, it kind of looked like a butterfly to me. So I have a friend that really, really loves flowers and butterflies. So I put, this is all of course embroidery with glitter in one color because I wasn't as creative as you. 
And then I put the butterfly is a flying flower. The flower is a tethered butterfly. And then I just added some little butterflies on it to kind of make it, you know, add out. These butterflies are built into our cutter software. So it was easy peasy for me just to hit that. But I, you know, I love the colors of it. I, it's hard to find, you know, sometimes that color that you just think is the best one ever to where that's why I love vinyl because it is the best color ever. Yeah. But that was my that. version of that design was to throw it on that. a jacket because, you know, I'm not going to carry that clutch when I'm in my PJs at home. Right. <laughs> you know, if I'm being honest. <laughs> you, hey, maybe we should. Maybe we should. So, OK, so um, some other questions and comments popped up. So as Kelly says um, he would always tell customers in my class that he doesn't <laughs> you don't consider yourself an embroiderer until you have sewn your hoop inside your project. <laughs> And I definitely I've never done that. Relate. I can relate. Yeah, I'm not even gonna <laughs> lie. And so, um, a stitch in time. Hey, thanks for uh, joining. That's Rhonda, right, Steph? That's Rhonda. Yeah. The so, and, um, and then Rhonda says, uh, "What does that mean? Set in vinegar, and so you soak it. So, kind of like, yeah, the um, the the and." The times that I've read it, like on the tea stained and stuff, you can correct me, but the tea stained um, way of dyeing fabric, when you put it in the tea, it gets the color into the fabric and then you put it in vinegar and the vinegar then sets the, the color into the fabric, supposedly. Mm -hmm. And then once you put it in the vinegar, you rinse it out. Do you think it's the same with the food coloring it as is. well? And what I do a lot of times if I'm doing several projects, I put vinegar in my wash. So that oh. way... I just pour vinegar in, it'll wash through it. That way I've set it and I don't have to sit there and soak. And I, I was going to go back to Karen because <laughs> I saw this one. And Karen so Olsen says, <laughs> new to this. I just like a salad. Tinder. That is correct. <laughs> I know, Karen, it has done it to all of us. When we were all introduced to Caesar, we all think Caesar salad. Yes. And then uh, Stephanie says, no, it's Caesar, not Sizer, not Scissor, not what? <laughs> not sister. Not and sister. so, you know, after yes. a while... <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Karen. We all, <laughs> we all can relate to that. So yes, Caesar, S I S. E R. So, um, and then Joanne says make uh, quick gifts too, which I think is actually, yeah, absolutely a great idea. And so, um, and then Marianne um, looks like Marianne Doty says, or is that, Do is that Dottery? Dottery? And she says, um, would stitch holes be a problem? I, I'm not exactly sure what we're talking about because we've, you know, gone past several things. So maybe clarify, Marianne, if we don't get your answer. But when you're stitching um, on the, the glitter, particularly, if you're doing a straight stitch, like this is my straight stitch for my embroidery machine, I... I don't see any holes. I think what she's referring to, like stitch holes, your needle penetrations maybe. Um, and so I don't see that on any of here, but Marianne, it does rip away from the inside just as it would at the outside of your applique like I did. So my flower where I just ripped all that away, when we're done and I take that out of the hoop, I absolutely will fuse that with my iron to make sure that my heat transfer vinyl is is fused, but I'm thinking she means stitch holes from uh, uh, from your needle. So unless, can you think of something else, Stephanie? No, but I, I think one of the things that I'm going to go back just to make sure when you were saying iron, so this, you know, it could get loose because that needle has perforated it. So yeah. I always am going to press, I press everything from the back side. So yeah. that way that heat has activated the adhesive on that glitter or whatever you're using, it right. will activate that. So everybody will ask about why do I press from the back? Because you see me use a heat press from the front. I don't yeah. want that on my, my thread. thread. I don't press want that heat to press my thread in. So that's why I go from the back. And then yeah. that way it's adhered. And Joanne said she was going to have a pajama party and invite us. <laughs> oh, I so love I, that. I've already lost track because I'm already ready to go to Joanne's for a pajama party. 
<laughs> yeah, let's do it. I love that. I love that. Um, and then there was a question that came up earlier, Steph, but I lost it because the comments are moving. But uh, someone was asking about um, washing. And oh, and Retha, I love this comment from Rika. She said, Retha, she said she's making a tote now. So she's going to get her Caesar vinyl and put it on the pocket. So I think that's a great idea. But there was a comment earlier about laundering the, the Caesar HTV. So do you want to speak to that? Yes, thank you. And so people, you know, I, this is not a new, new, we've had vinyl on the market for years and years. And guess what? We've been using them with our cutters, putting them on shirts and washing them. Right. And they last for, you know, for longer than I like the shirt, probably. Our recommendations have always been to wash and inside out and then hang to dry. That's the official yeah. recommendation have we always, you know, as me being busy, have I thrown it in a dryer? I have, and it was fine. But the official recommendation is turn it inside out, wash it and dry it. I have a shirt that I show a lot of times at a show that I've now washed 42 times. And like I said, in the real world, I've already gained weight or gotten skinny again and got over that shirt by 42 washes. So, you know, but it does hold up in the laundry. That's what it was made for was to be laundered. Yeah. And, and, and I definitely agree. I have it on shirts from, you know, years ago that have been washed mm -hmm. and things and, and never had an issue. Um, and then uh, Sue says, uh, how is the purse fabric attached to the clutch frame? It is glued. So how is it attached? <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie has some really fun um, when she glues her purse frame in. She says that she tends to glit the glue everywhere. So the best thing I could recommend for this um, to make it the easiest possible is if you get a fabric glue that has a very thin nozzle. Um, and then I have a frame here that I can show. So then the frame here, I'll, I'll flip back over to uh, my camera here. And so the frame uh, has a groove in the inside. Let me open it up here. And you will put a bead of glue down in the frame there. And so if you get a, uh, a glue that has a thin nozzle, then it the nozzle will fit down in there and you just run that glue. And then you just slide, uh, let me show you on one of these here. So this will have a lining on it and so it will be folded nicely. So if you top stitch that, it'll keep it really flat. And so then you just slide that into the frame. Now, what I like to do is I start with the, the back side. And so this would be all turned under. And then I can actually start at the bottom of this frame here. And then I just slide it up on both sides. And then I just kind of shimmy it up until it's in that groove. And um, one thing that you could do to help push it into that groove is to uh, use like a stiletto uh, some sort of flat card, like if you have a really thin ruler to help push it in there. Um, but if you'll start from this side, this one I find the easiest. And I usually, this is a recommendation from Eileen. I usually fold back the front flap and then I'll put like a, a, a clip here to hold it. And then I'm just working with the back and then I just slide that up into that bottom frame there. And, and it's just glue. Use fabric glue. Uh, that's a permanent hold and that holds the frame to the, to the clutch uh, bag there. So um, it's really, really easy. And so let me show um, another one too while we're under here. So today our special is the Sally Tomato Pressing Station. So let me show you that because I actually use this to press open the seams. Um, but the Sally Tomato Pressing Station is a set of four pressing boards and uh, this post we call it and it actually uh is modular so you snap the post into whichever uh board you want to work with and then the other one goes on top like this and uh, then you can switch these out if you need to but it comes with two four inch and the four inch uh are worked together so that you can put them on their side just like this and so here's uh, one of the bags. So this is how you assemble it. Um, you'll put the two uh, outer pieces right sides together and you'll do the similar with the lining, but the lining you leave an opening. Um, and so the first thing you do is you stitch the bottom together and then you want to press that open. So this is one thing I love about the Sally Tomato pressing station. It's got a bull nose, uh, one of these plates. And then if you push your seam over that and then just use your iron, um, and press right on that. It's super uh, crisp 
when your seam is done. And the bull nose, what that does, believe it or not, it keeps you from getting any press through. Have you ever worked with a fabric that um, you could see your seam on this side because you pressed it flat. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, Stephanie, but the uh, that bull nose actually prevents that because you're pressing right down the center. And so you're not pressing the entire seam flat. So I love that on the, the Sally Tomato uh, pressing station. But the two boards work together and then you can uh, switch them out um, to whatever one you need. And so this one right here, this is actually one that I used um, when putting patches on somewhere, I have some, here we go. <laughs> so these little bitty shoes here, I put the patches on the toe. And if you've ever had to iron, look at that. It fits perfectly. If you have to iron something really tiny, this board, I want to say it's like an inch and a half is what it, uh, is the width of it. And so you can iron in some really tight places. So, um, when you're assembling your bag and you're pressing uh, these corners here, you can actually stand it up on end and get right in that corner. Oh, this is black. That's a horrible example. Let me do this one. <laughs> and so this one, you can see how it fits right in that little corner there uh, so that you can actually press once you've boxed your corner. So um, it can be stood up on end. You can put it on its side. It's really a modular system. This, this is our special for uh, today. I just wanted to share with you while we were under here. And actually, the nice thing about the special today is it actually comes with Sally Tomatoes design collections. Um, this collection is for uh, quilting and embroidering your handbag. And so it has some beautiful uh, embroidery and quilting designs in this one set. And so to the special today, you get that, the design collection, and uh, you'll get free shipping if you're spending over 75. So uh, what do you think about that uh, pressing station stuff? How cool is that, right? Well, I, you know, you know, I'm kind of allergic to an iron. <laughs> and so you remember the story where I dropped my iron and I burnt a triangle into my carpet and I kept a box there all the time so that somebody didn't see that I had done that. So I am kind of, you know, I now think I need that pressing because I loved when you showed it on end right. to get that really pretty box corner. Absolutely. So, you know. There's somebody that's on here watching that makes beautiful in the hoop bags and she always has the most beautiful pressings. And I know that Reen uses this. Yeah. So now I think Stephanie needs this. So click away over here on my little Absolutely. shopping cart. I totally agree with you. I, I, it's very useful. I was really surprised at how much I'll use it. I don't make a ton of bags because, you know, I embroider on a variety of different things, but it actually comes um, in handy if you're doing like something on a neckline or a sleeve, even I can right. fit the sleeve over. Um, I too, sleeves so. all the time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so this is actually good. When we were talking about putting the bag into the frame, an old uh, a dinner knife uh, that this uh, Facebook user says to use to get the frame in there. And that, that's actually a really good one. So and that and then a credit card. Yeah. Yes. Karen's yes, a credit card. exactly. But, but not your but not your synchrony credit card, you yeah. know, but, mm -hmm. you know, maybe another one. <laughs> she said an old one. So, yeah, you know, yeah, today, an old one. I could, you know, wallpaper from hotel keys. So even a hotel key would be a oh, great thing true. to use. That's true. An old gift card too. Right. Yeah. If you've used up all the, the, on the gift card. So, uh, Carrie, Harriet Ann Palmer says that on the ombre clutch with the Caesar, uh, stacked on top of each other, did you remove the lower layer that was not visible? I did ish because that design wasn't really meant for, um, how I used it. And so the top of each layer of the bag, let me go to it. I'm a, I'm a talker with my hand stuff. So I, I like to point, you know, um, so <laughs> I just think it gets the point across, you know, when I you agree. just point. And so here we go. So on, um, so the top of each of these layers here, 
they were not, um, since it wasn't meant to be an applique, there was no line, no line of stitching that actually separated the two. So what I did was I stitched the purple first. And when I put the pink down, I left the entire sheet of purple. And before I did the, the lighter pink, what I did was I stuck my finger kind of underneath here and I pulled out the purple because at that point I knew that my pink, you know, was everywhere it needed to be. And I did the same, uh, uh, I was going to do the same thing here, but I was unable to because this one sealed off. You guys saw me pull these pieces off here. But again, if you use this particular design to do what I've done here, just know that I have reordered the stitches so that they would stitch in this manner. The design itself is stitched in a way that is appropriate for a solid piece like Stephanie did on her bag. So in this case, I guess I was the one that went rogue a little bit there, but I just couldn't. When Gloria suggested that, I was like, oh my gosh, I can so see that. That's going to be perfect. So I love that. Well, we um, both went rogue so, a little bit because yeah. it wasn't even made. To, it wasn't even an applique design. We well, that kind of, is true. We saw it and we thought definitely that could be because like you said, it had that thin satin stitch. It was very easy to rip away. Right. And, you know, to me, I loved those, the little orange and I love the way you use that orange. That was gorgeous on there. Right. Absolutely. And then Mary uh, Larson says, when pressing those corners, would you use a pressing sheet over the vinyl? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever I pressed the, uh, the vinyl to the fabric, you know, I left the carrier sheet on there, which is kind of like that pressing sheet, but it's adhesive. And so then anytime I do any pressing to the, to the HTV after I've removed that sheet, like this piece of fabric here, I definitely would use a protective sheet. Uh, like a, um, I use an old piece of um, quilting cotton. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a, a regular pressing sheet that I use as well um, for that. But yeah, definitely. Any other things that you want to say about pressing it, uh, Stephanie, after you've removed the carrier sheet? Any other things that we need to make sure that we remember? You know, if I'm using an iron, I'll what I do is I take a handkerchief and I tie it to where it stays in place and I don't have to keep moving it. Does that make sense? Yes. Because yes, absolutely. that's what my grandmother did. So that's what I'm going to do. I okay. typically don't use a cover sheet. I use fabric like, you, you know, like I said, mine's a bandana that I throw over it. Ooh. That's a good idea. Yeah. For the bandana. I just have like a, I buy a bolt of like white and black fabric because I use it so much for like mm -hmm. testing and things like that. I usually will just cut off a strip of that. And that's usually what I do for, for my protecting. Um, and then uh, Karen here says, uh, what is the uh, presser that <laughs> Stephanie used behind it's her? Behind me. Yeah. So this so. is a Caesar craft press. You can get those at Michael's. It is nine by 12. To me, it's the perfect size for a crafter. Yeah. And even if it, you know, you wanted to press something bigger, you can press and then move and press it again. Yeah. It doesn't take up a ton of room. It's not heavy, so I can carry it to Ashley's when we want to get to, you know, when I come down to Florida. Right, because so I don't you never have know. One. But again, it's called a craft press, heat press. And if somebody has questions, they can even ask me, you know. Yeah. So Stephanie says on Facebook and I'll be glad to answer any of those questions. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And Stephanie's my go-to too. I've learned so much <laughs> from her over the years. You know, she's been, you know, working for Caesar for a while, but even before that, she's been doing heat transfer for vinyl forever. Um, Retha Ranke says she uses parchment paper to press the vinyl. That's a good one uh, too. Thank you, Retha. Really good point. So, okay. If you've got more questions, make sure that you are asking them. Um, oh, and Carrie says silk organza is a great yeah. pressing cloth too. That's actually a really good um, one. That's excellent to to use so um and then rain says steph is a wealth of knowledge i definitely agree with that <laughs> for sure so she i don't even have to look up anything in the encyclopedia i just call stephanie you know. <laughs> the encyclopedia the whole uh you know yeah. the bookshelf full that i've got out here that i refer to regularly so that's, that's what texting is you know it was invented just for that just for right. now <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so uh, if you've got more questions, definitely let us know. Um, and I would just wanted to share. So this is the design that uh, Steph and I were using, but you know, you don't have to use this. We were 
just sharing with you, you know, uh, something that we did, you know, using our household items, things that we already had on hand. Um, but if you do like it, that's available. Um, it's super easy to assemble. You guys saw this a little bit, but I wanted to show you those pictures in case you had any questions. And then we also used um, the colors from our Shimmer and Shine set. So if you're new to um, HTV, um, this is a collection of um, Kingstar Metallic Thread and uh, Caesar Glitter HTV, where we've perfectly matched the HTV with the um, the thread. And so Dime also has those. So that's where I got my um, HTV from, is from the Shimmer and Shine set. Stephanie works for Caesar, so her HTV flows like a waterfall. So um, And so that's where that came from. But then I do want to tell you our special this week. You guys always know that we have a product um, that is kind of our our, our sponsor, our feature items, and the Sally Tomato Pressing Station is what is on special today. The other things that we used were just things that we had around we were incorporating, um, but it is on special for $79.99 and free shipping if you use the promo code 75 free ship. And it does come with Sally Tomatoes handbag embellishment collection, which is a, a $70 design collection. So you're getting that for free, which is super impressive. Um, and speaking of um, uh, free, we've got our on the house design coming up next. So so I'll share that with you in just a moment. But I do want to let you know, if you want to make sure you're notified of our Facebook live events, Eileen does one every Thursday. Um, I'm filling in for her today. And I also have one on the first and the third Tuesday of every month that is all about software. So make sure that you like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified. And if you're unfamiliar of how to do that, here's a short little video showing you how to uh, accomplish that. We want to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on Manage Follow Settings. Click on Live Videos and Enable Notifications. Make sure they're all set to all. Now you're all set. <laughs> Perfect. So Steph, did you know we give a free design away every single week? I do know that and I have quite a few of them. Yes, and they are fun to uh, do all kinds of things with. So if you haven't ever uh, taken advantage of our on the house design, it's a free weekly design that Eileen announces every Thursday when she goes live. And once a month, she actually makes a project and shares the instructions for the project as well. Um, and that's actually coming up next week, the monthly project. So um, they are limited time. So make sure if you see it, and you like it, go ahead and download it. Um, if you make something with the on the house design or actually I think anything dime related or Caesar, share it on Facebook. We love to see what you're doing. If you're using uh, the HTV from our Shimmer and Shine or any of our products, um, tag us dime so along on uh, hashtag on the house or hashtag exquisite thread. We'd love to see what you're making. Um, and in fact, I think, do we have a, a short little video that uh, we can show um, some of the projects of things that everybody have been making? that St. Patty's Day coaster that had uh, HTV in that as I well. I saw that. Super cute. Added some nice shimmer. So this week's On the House design is this design uh, from the Chinese Zodiac sign, Year of the Rabbit. So 2023, <laughs> did you know that, Steph, was the Year of the Rabbit? I, I do. And yeah. we, so you know that this, we came out with our own electronic cutter at Caesar. And so yeah. we have the whole series of the Zodiacs for the, Ooh. so we did a whole thing on the rabbit. That's the only reason that I know that. 
That is awesome. And 2023 is the year of rabbit. And if I remember correctly, I'm not, I don't know all, you know, exactly, but I think every 12 years. So 12 years ago, it was the year of the rabbit. So, um, but that's a cute little bunny. Not only could it be uh, the Chinese Zodiac sign, but well, um, it's that time of year, right? It's the East. It could be your Easter bunny for sure. So, um, and I do see a couple of other questions that popped up that I just will answer before we uh, go. And so, uh, Tam uh, says, do these replay? Um, it overlapped with my quilt class and I bought for 12 months. Absolutely. So you can rewatch um, any of our Facebook live. If you go to uh, Facebook under, I think the past lives or under YouTube where it says uh, lives, you can rewatch this. Um, it is out there. I'm pretty sure forever. So, um, <coughs> so yeah. So next week, Eileen will be back. I promise I misspoke last week, um, but she will be back next week. And she has got some more sparkle for you uh, to share. She's doing something uh, uh, different, but definitely still will have sparkle. <coughs> and she has the on the house project that she will be revealing next week. So make sure you join her next Thursday at uh, 1 p.m. Central. So Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for being thank here. You. <laughs> yes, I could not have done this without you. I always think it's nice to show different ideas and you always definitely bring something gorgeous and unique. So I had fun working with our household items. I hope you did too. Well, for me, you know, now I just got to go try to scrub this a little bit more. I always enjoy getting to spend time with you, Ashley. And I wanted to say I love that Kelly pointed out to buy to buy everything. So everybody <laughs> just listen to what Kelly said. Because he said to buy everything. Right. And, you know, of course, we have to listen to that. Yeah. and go buy everything yeah I, I love it one person had asked something about caesar at hobby lobby and i we don't it's not sold at hobby lobby they may have a vinyl but it's not caesar yeah gotcha well, sounds good. Well, Steph, I am going to um, say, I guess we'll see you guys later. So yeah. um, until uh, next week, Eileen, we'll see you between friends. Thanks, everyone. We'll see Bye you day. next time.